Hey guys, thanks for checking in today. This is my guide on how to do an oil change on a BA, BF Falcon. I know some of the FGs have very similar engines. Not much has changed. So <clears throat> what you'll need is actually not a lot. You'll need your oil, of course, um, oil filter, 15 millimeter spanner, um, oil filter removal tool if yours is quite stuck. I like to keep some you know, rags handy because it does get a little messy. An oil you know, drip tray. I mean, of course, I always like to use my factory jack um, to jack up one side of the car, but I'll go into that in just a moment. But um, I'll just give you guys a quick overview before I actually get into the job, so that way, um, you know, for anyone that has done this before, um, you'll you'll know exactly what to expect. Anyone that hasn't done this before, uh, this will be a bit of an overview, so you know what's involved. Um, essentially, what we need to do is take out the plug that's holding all the oil in. So every car's got a an oil drain plug that's um, designed for quick, you know, and easy emptying of your engine oil. Um, of course, you definitely should be servicing your engine oil regularly to prolong the engine life. Um, so also, so nothing in your engine goes bang, <laughs> then you have to go for a new engine or a new car. So what I always start off with, because on these um, Falcon engines, the that oil uh, drain plug is on the far left side of the engine. So as we're facing the engine today, it's on our right hand side. And um, I'll just show you guys what I mean under the car. Um, <clears throat> so we've got the, the sump here holding all of the oil. And our sump plug is in this far corner here. And um, the reason that I only jack up one side of the car and not the other is that because now that the car is is tilted like this, it's actually going to encourage more of the oil to tip out of that oil uh, drain site over here. I used to, um, you know, always drive onto uh, car ramps so that way the car was level and I could get under easily. But I find with one side jacked up, um, you know, there's still plenty of access to get under here. So what we need to start off uh, doing <coughs> is going through and, and uh, opening the oil filler cap. Um, I find <clears throat> that will help the oil drain out the other end easier. I never take it off and put it aside because I'm a little <laughs> personally worried that gunk and you know, leaves and whatever blowing around might get in there. So I just leave it ajar like that, capped, so nothing can really get in, but there's still a bit of airflow. And then next up, we want to get under the car and put our oil drip tray ready for collection. Um, so you can slide that underneath, like so. Grab your 15 millimeter spanner slide that underneath and so uh, this is that bolt that I was referring to earlier that 15 millimeter bolt very oily please don't mind that um, <clears throat> so you want to angle your drip tray in a way that as soon as you unbolt this bolt because it's gonna you know, shoot out and you want to try and see if you can guess its trajectory I don't ever put it straight underneath I put it out a little bit to start with so there's um, you know a little bit of play to go in and um, then it's just as simple as getting your spanner on here and um, you want to just loosen it you want to crack it open first so for anyone that hasn't really done this before by crack it open I mean you want to have this opening just a little bit like that um, <clears throat> and you should be able to do the rest by hand so in this case let's go a little more because I feel it's still a bit tight and I can't do it by hand yet um, so we can do this a little more I'm just gonna for the um, for the interest of video time, I'm just going to loosen this with my, I've got a ratcheting end of the spanner here like this. And I like to get it to a point, again make sure your, your drip tray is handy in case you start getting some drips. I like to get this to a point, oh tightening, let's flip that around. Um, yeah, I like to get it to a point that it's really loosey and goosey, like I'm feeling that that's quite loose. Let's give it a test by hand here guys. <clears throat> camera yeah perfect so that's now able to be removed by hand and what you want to do guys is if you were to loosen it all the way without stopping what would happen is eventually your um, oil will just go to quickly shoot out and also um, you know you may lose your bolt into your dirty oil in the drip tray so what I like to do is you know really do it really nice and slow so I got to a point now it's really easy I'm not having to put much pressure and much force and um, of course definitely hovering that drip tray in the line that I can see and uh, now I'm gonna basically do it by feel guys there's no 
wrong way to do this and you won't cause any damage for anyone that's a bit nervous just if you've been driving um, and uh, you've just recently pulled over at home um, to do this job the oil will be very hot so just wait some you know a while for your engine oil to cool down otherwise you'll risk burning yourself um, <clears throat> so now I'm just gonna get it to a point that I feel it's really loose and you might even start seeing some oil starting to drip out that's when you know your bolt is almost out and so from here you know, I'm just going to get it to a point, see if I can show you guys, you know. I actually like to use a little bit of pressure and hold it against the the sump itself, so that way I've, I'm in control. I'll see if I can get this in a comfortable position. I can show you guys. Uh, be perfect, and uh, yes, there it is. So, I like to get it to a point. I can feel it's a little loose. See that, guys? It's really loose now, so it's just about ready. A few more turns, and I'm holding it in towards that sump, you know, holding a bit of pressure. We see the oil starting to drip out now guys see that so now we know we're ready so there's not much to, I'm just going to pull it out really quickly just show you guys what I mean here and we've got that drip tray ready so one two three pull perfect just make sure that you're getting it into the tray and at this stage now you can wait for it to empty on its own I like to make sure that I can put this somewhere safe so I don't lose it <clears throat> and give it a clean up but now we can watch all that beautiful old oil coming out and uh, I like, you know, if you're not rushed for time, guys, you can um, wait for all the oil to, to come out. And, you know, eventually, and I'll show you guys in a sec, it'll start just dripping out quite slowly. Now, as I mentioned, if you're not in a rush to change your oil, you can wait for the oil to really slow down, indicating that there's not very much oil left, you know, in the in the pan. I like to not rush myself because <clears throat> any any an old oil that is left in the system, even though we're introducing a lot of fresh oil and it's going to... Uh, you know, basically dilute it. It won't really matter how much older oil is left. I still like to take, you know, let as much, um, you know, drain as possible so that there's less contaminants still, you know, diluting into the new uh, fresh oil. So I'll just pause there for a sec, guys, and I'll show you once, you know, the flow gets really slow what I mean by waiting for it to completely drip. When I come back out, guys, you know, of course, you'll be quite a little messy, so <clears throat> I like to clean up the old plug make sure it's nice and clean no dust no dirt um, put that aside somewhere for safekeeping give yourself a bit of a clean and um, <clears throat> I'll show you guys now that the oil is starting to uh, slow down <clears throat> so next while the engine oil is draining <clears throat> then it can take um, you know a good part of say 10 to 15 minutes to more like towards the more um, empty side <laughs> for you um, I like to wait at least like an hour if I've got the time, let as much of the old oil, you know, drip out. As we can see, the, the flow is quite, you know, thin now. There's not a lot of oil left, so it's just the last little bits coming out. Next, we have our oil filter, which is located just above on that um, left-hand side of the car. Now, generally, because these oil filters don't get removed that much, um, and also if someone before you has uh, done these up quite tight, you may not be able to remove it by hand. It may be quite tight. Um, and like today that is quite tight ah, I reckon I probably could get it by hand but just to show you all with the um, oil filter removal tool so our oil <coughs> filter is up here I think that's in shot um, <clears throat> and if it's again too tight to do it by hand I just use a, an oil filter removal tool there's many out there you can get some that sit over the top but in just as simple as something like this it just lets you get around with uh, much more ease and if I can get two hands there we go I like to grip it in, and pinch it in quite tight so it can grip pinch it and then you can start to give it a bit of a spin and as we can see it starts to break it free from its position I like to let go again come back give it a, a tighten okay it's starting to get some, some motion here guys beautiful yes so that's how, this is just the, perhaps an example of one that's on very tight. Okay. <clears throat> Beautiful. So this is why, guys, when you put the new one on later, you want to make sure that you're only doing it up by hand, and um, that way you can remove it a lot easier. So as we can see, it was starting to get really loose here. Now I'll bring the camera forward to show you all because what's going to happen next is as we remove the oil filter more and more and loosen it more and more, there's actually going to be quite a lot of oil <clears throat> starting to drip out 
from the position that it's mated to the engine there is going to you know make a bit of a mess as it runs down so i like to make sure the oil filter catch uh you know your, your little tray there is not only located that it can still catch the remaining oil coming out from the oil sump plug location but it will also line up with the area that the oil is going to come out from the oil filter and catch that oil so you don't make much of a mess so i like to shift this over a little bit beautiful we're in action so i'll just show you guys this oil filter section part of it as well and there we go so i like to just give this a spin see already the oil starting to come out from the bottom of that oil filter guys so what i like to do so there's not as much of a mess i make it loose enough that you'll start to see that the oil so will start coming out perfect and again move your move your oil drip tray so it can catch that oil so you don't make a mess and i like to actually let the oil drain a little bit on its own like that so that there's less of a mess when you go to remove the oil filter out just pause it there guys and, and, and show you once the oil is finished coming out and guys we've got to a position now that the oil filter there's not a lot of oil in these filters it might be a couple hundred mil um it's now you know just you know really only dripping a couple drops at a time so that's enough for me that means there's not a lot of oil left in the actual filter to kind of go everywhere as soon as we invert this to remove it so then you know at this point all that we've got to do next is um undo it a little more and then once you've got it free again i like to hold some force against the engine that way uh excuse me that way against the engine as i'm undoing it so it doesn't just fall and go everywhere again you'll do this by feel a few times and you'll know exactly what i mean um <clears throat> so i'm just getting it you know loose by hand and giving it a bit of a wobble we can see it's getting close and a little more holding ah there we go i felt it was really loose perfect and again there's going to be a lot of oil that's coming out so i like to make sure that drip tray is really handy you can some of these filters they've got not the filters but the drip trays there's a little a male kind of a, a rod coming out i just hang my filter there and then later on you can remove the filter and the old oil all in one with that drip tray but as we can see here guys there's still a little bit of oil that will come out out of the actual oil filter housing location so i like to just let that drip on its own let all the old oil come out um, and come back and then what we'll do once the old oil is completely you know finished here we can put the old uh, sump plug back in and then we'll put the new oil filter up there and that's just about all the work done we just need to then fill up the oil um, and i'll show you guys my my process there so we'll come back after maybe a half hour or so um, once all the oil has stopped dropping as we can see there's still oil coming out from the oil filter here oil filter location and also still from the we well, can see it's really starting to slow there's not a lot left out of both of them they're only just dripping a few per second so again i'm not in any rush i just let this you know finish on its own and then um you know get get it all uh, plugged up new filter on and the new oil in and i'll show you my my procedure there so guys i'll be back in a few moments go use your rag and clean yourself up okay guys before we go and install our new oil filter um, just that I quickly mention that for these Falcons we need 6.6 .6 litres of uh, engine oil and I've opted for a 1040 semi-synthetic today um, so with 10 litres I have plenty left over for future top-ups and, and uh, perhaps the next oil change um, but what we want to do is put in a little bit of oil just on this rubber seal which will not only help us to remove the filter when it comes to it next time in the future but it also just helps so that it avoids um, these o-rings getting stuck up uh, you know on the engine side so um, what I do is um, you know, of course we just take off our plastic covering you'll need the oil number 516 or if it's a Ryko brand Z 516 um, for this BF Falcon for the BA Falcon it's the Z9 uh, a little bit of a longer filter um, but what I do very very simply I just uh, with you know brand new oil I'll just give that a little bit of a glob like that upside down and then when you take our cap off should have done this <laughs> earlier um, but we'll just hold that um, but yeah once you've done that little upside down invert um, there'll be some fresh oil um, inside the lid here like this and what we can do just grab some with your finger rub it onto the ring here like that and that's perfect you know you've got that lubrication on that o-ring um, so that you don't have any issues with that 
going in the future. Now, um, what we can do as well is use a bit of oil and tip that into the filter so that when we have it installed into the onto the engine, there's um, you know already some oil spinning in here. Um, it also just helps you avoid you know potential air getting trapped in the system things like that but I also find that that means there's less to have to top up from the engine side later but uh, what we'll do here is uh, just tip a little bit in it may be a little bit tricky one-handed sorry guys but yeah I just like to tip in you know just a couple hundred mil not a lot because don't forget with these oil filters um, for this Falcon it's positioned at an angle under the engine like that so, so if you've filled it all the way to the top as soon as you you know turn it sideways to go and start spinning it onto the engine you're going to start to get you know some oil you know tipping out so i only like fill it maybe about a quarter maybe half at the max and i'll show you guys the actual spinning action onto the car side in just a sec i'll go and put a couple hundred mil in here maybe 100 200 mil at most and uh, i'll join you guys under the car Thanks guys, so now getting under the engine we can see if we watch the oil uh, sump plug section it's really slowed down, there's not a lot of oil coming out. Again if you've got the luxury of time I let that completely stop or at least really slow down. Uh, but anyway we're uh, just going to go through and install our new oil filter here. Um, so what I generally find um, I do is I'll just get a rag, get a clean one if possible guys. <coughs> and I'll just uh, clean up all the, the leftover oil that's just been you know, making a mess and dripping down uh, like so and especially on this mating surface just make sure it's nice and clean and then once you're happy that's all nice and clean we can go grab grab our new oil filter with that slight oil in there so just be careful you don't make a mess guys you might have to work quick but basically what we need to do is once we turn this oil filter slightly sideways, it will spin onto that um, thread section there. And uh, what you want to do is make sure that it's going on nice and easily. You don't want to force it, because if you force it, that's when you could damage the screws and be in a lot of trouble. Um, and I mean, sorry, damage the threads. Uh, so what I generally like to do is I'll get it inverted sideways. And of course, when you do this a couple times, guys, you'll be able to do it by feel. But I'll get it sideways on there, and you feel that it's kind of slightly located. And I'll just test it slightly by hand and as long as it can go on very easily like that that's perfect and what I found is when I first start is again I hold some pressure that way as I'm spinning that will help it locate but see now that we're nice and easy you can spin it by one finger you know what's going on easily if you're having to force it and turn it that means it's it's on incorrectly do not force it um, undo it start again from scratch make sure you can go on nice and uh, easily like that and then just get it to a point that you can basically get it as as tight as you can by hand and that way you'll make sure you won't get any oil leaking but also at the same time you'll be able to remove it next time when it comes to your next oil change so ah, that's it one more for luck all oh, right beautiful so that's that and now we can go get our sump plug from earlier make sure it's nice and clean guys go back to our location for the oil sump plug location as you can see guys it's still dripping here um, if I had some more time up my sleeve today I'd wait for this to completely empty but really it doesn't matter of course we're going to be diluting any slight contaminants there's always going to be some contaminants left in the system anyway but again this is another one guys you want to make sure it can go in by hand um, and you know clean it up a little more than I have <laughs> um, give it a good good clean but I find yeah you want to just get that into the hole and then just by hand you want to make sure it's very easily go in and spin and you don't want to be forcing this in that means it's going in incorrectly and you're going to damage the threads on the way in so once you can get it started like that and uh, you know you can get to a point that you can't actually tighten it up anymore by hand you can go and grab your spanner which i have not got handy <laughs> there we go back again and so guys, now that you've got the spanner, you can go through and tighten this up. And you want to basically do it by hand, um, by hand tight. So once you get it to a point that it's not spinning anymore, um, and I'll just show you guys what I mean. I'll just swap to the other end of my spanner in case that's all you guys have. Um, go through, make sure it's on nice and tight. Uh, and, and by nice and tight, I mean that it's seated nice and nice and cleanly. So something like that, that's perfect. Oop. That's perfect there. And you want to just tighten this up just by hand. Um, like so. 
You don't want to over tighten it guys because then you damage, then you risk damaging the, the heads of the bolt. Um, and then you will be in some strife later on in the future. So I just make sure I can do it up and it's snug and not overdone, otherwise it'll be difficult to remove later on. I reckon guys I'm happy with that, don't want to overdo it. One more check for luck. Yes, happy with that. Beautiful. And that's about it guys, so just make sure you've cleaned everything up, you can use this opportunity to use some degreaser, clean everything, any oil leaks and, and you know, greasy areas. Uh, but all we need to do now is go through um, and drop the car down back on the ground and we can start to fill up the oil on the other side, so beautiful. Okay. Awesome guys, now that you've got your car on, on the ground, off the jack stand, um, you can get your oil, a funnel, and basically wrap up the job you can take your cap off i like to use a funnel i mean you could do it without a funnel but i like to use a funnel just so there's less uh spill from when we're emptying the bottle because usually it does start to like glob out quite quickly and can make a mess all over your engine so i like to make sure i've got a funnel that's seating firm that's that's nice and i'll just pop this down so you guys can see what i'm just doing with the oil so that's a good view yes yeah. And you can yeah, uncap your oil and start to just pop it in. So you don't want to actually go too crazy too quick. Sometimes it can overflow out the sides of the, the funnel and go all over your engine. But I find on these Falcons it's pretty good. So I'm just going to empty empty all the oil uh, out of this first one, all the, the whole 5 litres. And then we just need to basically um, pop in another 1.6 litres off of our other oil um, bottle. Uh, but I find one tactic you can do is if you start the car uh, once, let all the oil cycle through the engine, fill up in the oil filter, then you'll start to get your correct oil reading as you're starting to check between your minimum and your max on your dipstick. And I'll show you guys what I mean there in just a sec. We'll just try and remove as much as we can out of here. That'll do. Oh, there's still plenty more in there. That's all right. We can keep that for top-ups later on. That's beautiful, guys. So that's that. And we'll go grab our other bottle. I'll be back. Thanks, guys. Now we're back with our second bottle of oil, brand new oil. And we're going to put in... Again, you can do this by measurement on the sides of the bottle. They usually use the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 litre markings. So you can try and eyeball about 1.5 litres. Uh, what I'll do at this stage is I'm happy that's that's enough at this point. I'm going to go through, remove the funnel, and um, pop the, the oil cap back on. What I like to do so there isn't as much of a mess on the actual side here is I'll go through, because if you put your funnel down wherever, it's just going to drop any little bits of oil all over wherever you've last, you know, dropped the funnel. So I like to actually pop this funnel back into the top of the oil bottle itself, the brand new bottle, so there's less mess and less wastage gonna go through and pop the original cap back on turn the car on for you know just about 10 or 20 seconds let all the oil filter all the way through the system and then we can start to come over onto this side and check our oil level and and uh, we want to try and aim for uh, between the full and the and the low so I'll just take you guys through that in just a sec we'll just go start the car run it for about 10 or 20 seconds and then shut the car off, come back. We'll just turn you like that now, guys. So we'll just turn the car on, make sure it's in park. Beautiful. Turn it on. Sometimes you'll have your oil light for a few moments, so that should go out. And that's enough, guys. It's had time for the car to cycle the oil through. We can turn it off. And then we can go back. And what you want to do is um, grab like a, a rag again. I sometimes keep one in the engine bay like that, go through and actually um, take the dipstick out, clean the, the stick. I'll see if I can actually show you guys. Perfect. So um, what you want to do now, guys, is grab your oil dipstick out completely, give it a clean. That way you can get a good reading because when you started the car, all the oil jumped around and it will jump all the way up the dipstick. So grab it back inside, wait a few moments, one, two, three. Three, grab it out and I'll come and show you guys what we can see. So now, if we can get it on camera, yep, we'll be able to see, and I'll get this to focus, guys. Okay. Uh, yes. 
Well, just about anyway, guys. I think that's as good as I can get. The low and full markings at the moment, we're just about in between. Um, so you want to kind of pop the dipstick back in, pop in a little more oil until you've got it at the full marking there. Um, uh, it's a bit better. But yeah, you guys get the idea. Give it a clean, pop it back in, top up with some oil, and then same process, grab it out again, and make sure that it's between, sorry, that it's at your full and at your max. Beautiful. And guys, when you're happy that it's later on showing, you want to kind of pour in some oil, wait about a minute for all the oil to drop to the bottom and level out, and then you can get a correct reading on your dipstick um, for it to show a true reading of how much oil is in your system. Now, what I like to do is once I've got it at the full marking, um, I'll go for a drive, maybe five minutes, 10 minutes, come back on a flat level surface, and again, check that oil level once the car's been sitting for another, you know, couple minutes for all the oil to again drop and settle, I'll grab it out and you know, top up as necessary, making sure it's at the max marking. So, and guys, this is what it looks like when the oil is full. So between where we have the low marker and the max marker, we've got our oil just at that max marker. So you never really want to overfill it because there can be extra strain on the engine. You always want to keep your oil in this range. I like to keep it, you know, topped at the um, max marking, and that way you can keep an eye if your car is like leaking a lot of oil or burning a lot of oil. You can see how much you've you know lost in any given amount of time. So um, you can do that after you've gone for a drive. Check that your level is still max. If needed, you can top up a little bit more. So, guys, I hope this video has helped today. Um, just my overview of uh, what to do for the BF Falcon today. I've got the exact same engine in the BA, just it has a different oil filter. But as I mentioned, there's not a lot that you need, you know, about, you know, say seven litres of oil, but why not get ten, you know, two five litre bottles. Uh, funnel, your oil filter, you'll need that 15 millimetre spanner. And um, at this point in time, yeah, just, you know, a bit of time and an empty dip tray bucket, that's right. And just make sure that you dispose of your oil uh, safely, you know, a lot of the um, auto parts stores around Australia, um, they'll have recycling of, of old oil, so I like to put them back into the, the empty oil cans um, that they that I bought the, the fresh oil with, and, um, you know, it's a really good thing to do, guys, every, you know, five or 10,000 Ks, depending on how fast you are for your car. On my car, because I really want to keep it in good nick, uh, I do it every about seven and a half. Um, I used to do it every 5,000 k's, but I don't do city driving anymore. It's mostly highway, so seven and a half thousand there. On this car, every 10,000 k's, it's a work car. But guys, let me know if this video has helped you. Um, any questions, let me know. Um, other than that, as always, guys, flick something for luck. So today, let's just flick some oil for luck. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, guys, we'll catch you guys next time. Have a good one, and thanks for watching. Let me know if this video has helped. I love to check in with you guys, get some get some feedback. Perfect guys. Alright, have a good one. Catch us next time.